Hey everyone, Guz here, and today I'm going to show you a new ship. Uh, it's the one I've been talking about. It's, it's pretty big, took me a while to do. We're about a kilometer away, and you can see it's a rather large ship. Uh, this is the Horizon. It's a Nautilus class. It is a mining ship. Uh, my friends also seem to dub it the Toothbrush. I can see why. It's, uh, it's quite a big ship. It's the biggest ship I've made so far. Um, I think it's 15 or 16 million kilograms. Uh, full heavy armor plating. It's meant to withstand the rigors of space and disasters. It, uh, it's about 300 meters long, so about a third of a kilometer. Pretty big. And like all my ships, it is meant to be a, a fully functional sort of ship. Um, by that I mean it it's, you know, has full crew quarters and things like that. Of course, without the proper props and things like that to add in, they're only, you know, just additions, but you know, you can use them in survival to put in your stuff, uh, to put in, uh, chip, excuse me, uh, med bays and stuff like that. So, um, just do a quick run of the outside, and then we'll go inside, take a look. Here, you got a, a docking port at the front, and that, that connects to all the stuff inside, uh, all the containers and refineries so that you can load and unload things easy. Here, uh, is the mainstay of what this place is about collectors. And, um, and and drills, lots, lots of drills. And pretty much the idea is that you take this baby over an asteroid, which I've been doing and I'll demonstrate in a minute, and uh, you, you skim it across, you just mine and mine and mine, and you get tons of stuff out of it. So it's fun. Uh, a lot of spotlights and things to put some, some light on the subject as well. You probably saw in there an ore detector, uh, so you can see kind of what you're looking at, as well as a uh, gravity generator with the reverse field so that it could pull all the particulates up into uh, the collectors. Um, it's a fun setup. It's not super amazing, but it works pretty well. Um, uh, it'd probably be easier to do a direct thing, but I was doing trying for something different, and it's, it's kind of fun. I like it. Um, Standard stuff like the beacon, airlock, a couple airlocks, actually, uh, for easier access. And a hangar in the back. Feature some windows so that the industrial ship workers aren't just, you know, clawing their eyes out the whole time looking at the inside. Uh, in the hangar, we have a couple vessels, a little shuttle, which has room for a pilot and I think eight crew? Yeah, eight crew. Um, nice little shuttle, does its job, it's fast, take care of business. Uh, I believe I named this the, the Legos. Legos class shuttle, and uh, something I don't have a name for, a couple little uh, service bots. These are a uh, little, little welder and uh, grinder bots that can uh, help facilitate random things with the ship. If additions or, or repairs need to be made on the fly, or random builds, you know, things like that, that's what these are for. Um, we're going to come in through this way to the airlock, since we're back here, and take a look at the ship. Unlike my other ships, this ship is much less spacious inside. It, it's trying to go for something slightly more realistic. Uh, the only spacious part is actually the, the med bay and the next room, which are going to be, uh, you know, for leaving stress and things like that. Uh, med bay is a med bay. It's, you know, got a couple medical spots. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to add some chairs and things in here, but, you know, not much to it. Uh, also, aft gravity is here. The, the ship is so big, I need a few gravity generators, co generators to cover everything. Um, a lot of the ship is composed of these corridors to give it that, uh, you know, industrial ship feel. This is the only portion that is really big and open and kind of fun. Um, and yeah, it's not necessarily that practical, but I just want to do something a little different. Um, you know, there's a pretty much like a, a Federation mandate that uh, ships that go on super long voyages like this is meant to have to have some sort of place where uh, the workers can... You know, not go insane. You know, some sort of happy place or, or something like that. Uh, this is the crew area, the crew quarters and things like that. It's actually pretty much going to be a couple large areas where people just bunk together. Um, all in all, uh, you know, it can fit probably a crew of, of eight to ten. Um, here are the airlocks. Uh, nothing too fancy. Oop. Yep, another farmer leaving doors open. Uh, there we go. So yeah, airlocks, nothing particularly crazy there. And you can see places like this are, uh, are bulkheads. I've made the ship very sturdy, all heavy armor. Um, here is the engineering, and in engineering, very tight spaces. You got a lot of gyros, which, even with this amount of gyros, uh, we're not we're not moving too too fast. 
A um, couple stairways, by the way, to left and right. We'll, we'll get to those in a sec after engineering. A uh, couple large reactors. It's actually surplus power and then some. Um, but I built it this way and it ended up like that, so it is what it is. Further on is the actual industrial section, but we'll get to that in a moment. Coming down, a new area. This is the uh, bridge. And the bridge is designed so that you can actually kind of see what you're doing over there with this. And I, I find that you really do need to zoom out and use the external view to, to get the best view of it. But, but even so, you can do it from cockpit view. A couple of workstations and also airlocks. More airlocks. This is not a military vessel. So um, obviously that might be a security concern on a military vessel. But this is not one. And, and the hope is that this, this vessel is escorted when it is doing its missions, if nothing else, by something light. Um, I thought about putting some turrets on it just for safety from meteorites and things, but really I want this ship escorted. Uh, and then, yeah, get a nice view in here of the uh, outside. That works out pretty well. Moving on up. Gonna go to the front of the ship. The so-called toothbrush section. Uh, I've named it the Nautilus class, which, uh, uh, because it's kind of reminds me of like a squid or octopus, which I guess is more like cephalopod, but whoop, forgot about gravity. Uh, this section obviously has reverse gravity, and that is uh, for the, uh, to, to pull things up into the conveyors. This section has a, an extreme amount of refineries. I believe the number I have was 16 refineries, and it's, it's pretty unnecessary, but um, you can make use of it um, with how much this mines. It really does put up a lot. And you'll see this definitely is an industrial area. You come up to the top here and you can see everything that's going on. Everything's connected to a ton of large containers. Um, there's a lot. There, there's something like, I think, uh, 12, 14 large containers on here. A lot. Um, again, it's meant for very long range missions. And this thing is pretty much meant to eat asteroids. Period. This section leads to the docking section, and if you don't want to have to try to go in all the containers uh, individually in some way, that and they're all connected, um, there's a couple small containers here you can access and access the entire inventory of any of the refineries as well as all the the large containers. So that's that's the gist of the the ship as far as the internals and the outside and what it does. And, uh, real quick, what I'm going to do is get it in position to uh, mine and just kind of show you a little bit of that. And here we are, mining the surface of an asteroid. Um, you'll notice some drills aren't contacting, but uh, a number of them will. And uh, right now we're moving backward. You'll see a lot of sparks while this happens, but uh, it, the drills are actually really sturdy, so they can take that kind of stuff and without really getting damaged. And pretty much the idea is, the reason it's called the toothbrush, is you're kind of scraping across asteroids and just, uh, just, just, just taking off layers and surfaces of them. Um, and a lot of times I end up with, with a pretty big smathering of stuff. You know, you'll get a lot of stone for sure. Um, because doing specific targeting of, of things isn't always that easy. But you can see some iron deposits over there. Um, and we're just going to scrape across. And I'm actually going to turn off dampeners and pull back a little bit. So that I'm scraping across and going back and not just creating holes. You know, I'll be creating like section, line sections and things. And turn the dampeners on and we're going to pull up a little bit and then we're going to go back across and you start making these like plateaus in the rock and it's it's really a lot of fun this also promotes a, a team effort you know while only one person can really fly the ship i mean sure multiple people can be in it engage the controls but only one person can really fly the ship um there we go turn a little bit and uh so yeah, other folk, other people, other crew members and players in multiplayer in a cooperative sense can uh, can help to maintain drills, which don't necessarily need that much, but, um, you know, they do take a little damage from time to time, as well as maintain some of the ar sides of armor, because it's very easy to run into stuff on these asteroids scraping across like this. Uh, they can also help you uh, drive and, and not... Uh, not run into too much and mess up that heavy armor because it's hard to repair and with as much mass as this thing has when you run into stuff it really makes a big difference uh, it really really does do damage to the hull so the miners are very strong but 
Um, as well, uh, particulates get uh, pulled up into the uh, conveyor system, and that's pretty cool. Helps you uh, get a full smattering of the roid. And you can see, even with some of the obstacles there, we're just going to slowly mine through it. You just keep scraping across, and you can pull up a little, help you mine through some obstacles. But all in all, yeah, you get a big smattering of things. Uh, go to the inventory and see what our what things are working on. Um, another thing people can do, you can see we have a little iron and a lot of stone, but um, it gets kind of passed around. You can see some of my efforts before. Lots of refineries. Lots of refineries. Um, yeah, which you can have some of the crew do also is kind of move things between refineries to kind of get a better distribution and uh, have more things refining at once for just getting it all done, a little more efficiency in, in the resources uh, part. You can have another crew member uh, parsing out, uh, you know, actually taking the shuttle and putting resources into uh, into the shuttle and taking them off to an assembly base and things like that. Um, you know, just for uh, fun. Nice, efficient process, and it's still teamwork, you know. Not just one person flying the ship doing everything. Anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much it. That's the ship. This is the uh, Nautilus class uh, industrial ship. It's a it's a mining cruiser. You can define it in either of those ways. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Uh, this has been Guz. Hope you like it. And take care. Fly safe from the belt.